In this video, we're going to be talking about parametric equations of a surface. And in this particular problem, we've been asked to find a parametric representation of the surface, which is the part of the sphere x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals 4 that lies above the cone with the equation z equals root quantity x squared plus y squared. So essentially what we have is we have a sphere with this equation here, x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals 4. And some portion of this sphere, and it's a hollow sphere, so we're just thinking about the outside of it, right? So some portion of the outside of that sphere lies above the cone with the equation z equals square root of x squared plus y squared. So we just need to find parametric equations that represent the part of that sphere that's above the cone. So because we are dealing with a sphere here, what we can do is convert the equation of this sphere into the parametric equations given by x, y, and z, which are already in terms of these parameter values, rho, phi, and theta. So that's really convenient because we have a sphere and we have these conversion formulas to spherical coordinates, and they'll give us right away parametric equations because they're defined for x, y, and z. So the only thing we want to do before we write out these parametric equations is realize that the parametric equations are in terms of rho, phi, and theta, three parameter values. We only want them to be in terms of the parameter values phi and theta. We want to solve for this value of rho here and plug that in to x, y, and z so that these parametric equations are only in terms of phi and theta. So how do we find a value here for rho? Well, we have this fourth conversion formula here that tells us that the equation of the sphere x squared plus y squared plus z squared is equal to rho squared. And conveniently, the equation of our sphere is already in this format here where we have x squared plus y squared plus z squared is equal to 2 squared. So if we say that this is 2 squared, then we know that rho is equal to 2 because we can match up these equations and see that rho is equal to 2. Now we know it's not equal to negative 2 because by the definition of spherical coordinates, rho always has to be greater than or equal to 0, so we can discount a negative 2 value. Essentially, in spherical coordinates, rho represents the radius of the sphere, and because we're dealing with three-dimensional coordinate space, real space here, we couldn't have a negative radius. The sphere wouldn't exist. So we have to have a positive radius. Rho has to be greater than or equal to 0, which means that we're only looking at the value here 2, not negative 2 squared. So we know rho is equal to 2, which means that our parametric equations are x equals, here we're going to plug 2 in for rho, so we're going to get 2 sine of phi times cosine of theta. We're going to get y equals 2 times sine of phi times sine of theta, and we're going to get z equals 2 times cosine of phi. So here are three parametric equations that represent this sphere, but they represent the entire sphere, and we need to make sure we're only representing the part of the sphere that lies above the cone with this equation here defined for z. In order to do that, we need to limit the interval on which theta and phi are defined. So normally in spherical coordinates, when we're talking about the complete sphere, Theta is defined on the interval 0 to 2 pi, which makes sense because theta is the degree measure around the entire sphere, and we're looking at the entire sphere, so it's defined from 0 to 2 pi, the entire circle. Phi is always defined between 0 and pi because phi in spherical coordinates represents the angle between the positive direction of the z-axis and the spherical coordinate point that we're talking about. So for our purposes, because we're dealing with just the top part of some sphere, and we don't know exactly what it looks like, but if you can imagine here some sphere like this, and the sphere looks like this roughly, and let's say the cone just comes down like this, and so we're only interested in this top part of the sphere here, we know that theta is still going to be 0 to 2 pi because we're interested in the entire circle, which you can kind of think of as the horizontal cross section, right? We're still interested in this entire circle here. But for phi, we're only interested in coming down from the positive direction of the z-axis, which is straight up here. We're only interested in coming down this far to the point where the sphere meets the cone. We only want everything above that. So we're going to have to redefine the interval for phi. 
The way that we can do that, we have this equation for the cone, z equals square root of x squared plus y squared, and we have a parametric equation defined for z in terms of phi that represents the equation of the sphere. What we can do is set these two equations equal to one another. They're both defined for z, so we'll go ahead and set the right-hand sides equal to one another, and we'll say square root of x squared plus y squared is going to be equal to the right-hand side here, 2 times cosine of phi. Now at this point we need everything in terms of phi in order to redefine the interval for phi, so we want to use our parametric equations for x and y to plug in here for x and y. So what we'll get when we plug in x here is 2 sine of phi cosine of theta squared, because we have this x squared, plus here plugging in y we get 2 sine of phi sine of theta, and we'll square that because we have y squared. This is all underneath our square root sign, and that's going to be equal to 2 cosine of phi. So now we want to simplify what's underneath our square root. Here we'll get 4 sine squared of phi cosine squared of theta plus 4 sine squared of phi sine squared of theta. And we'll just go ahead and continue with the simplification. So we'll pull out a 4, we'll factor out a 4. We'll also factor out a sine squared of phi. So 4 sine squared of phi. When we factor that out, we get times quantity cosine squared of theta plus sine squared of theta, like this. We know that cosine squared of theta plus sine squared of theta is equal to 1, so this is going to cancel out. So taking the square root of 4 sine squared of phi, we're just going to be left with 2 sine of phi is equal to 2 times cosine of phi. We can divide both sides by 2 and get sine of phi is equal to cosine of phi. Now, we need to consult our unit circle in order to figure out where this is true. The sine and cosine of an angle are only equal to each other in the unit circle when the angle is equal to pi over 4. So this is only true when phi is equal to pi over 4. Because at the angle pi over 4, the x value of the coordinate point given by cosine of the angle is square root of 2 over 2, and the y value of the coordinate point given by sine of the angle is square root of 2 over 2. Those values are equal to each other, so sine of the angle pi over 4 and cosine of the angle pi over 4 are equal to one another, and at the angle pi over 4, this is going to be true. So we know phi is equal to pi over 4. What that tells us is that the interval we're going to define for these parametric equations here is going to be for theta, we said before, theta is still going to be greater than or equal to 0 and less than or equal to 2 pi, because we're interested in this entire circle here like this, but for phi we're going to say phi is greater than or equal to 0 and less than or equal to pi over 4 instead of pi which would define the entire sphere. Pi over 4 tells us we're only coming down this far in order to meet the cone. So this is the parametric representation, these parametric equations together with the intervals defining theta and phi is the parametric representation of the surface.